Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, can we go to the next one? Yeah, thank you. Um, we are uh, Ramon Piquet and Pilar Sanchez Gijón from the research group Tradomatica. Um, we have been collaborating with uh, PKP, PKP uh, initiative um, for already a long time. We translated, we collaborated with translation uh, of the interface and the documentation into Catalan uh, some years ago. And we also have a journal, I will speak about it a little bit uh, later on, uh, which is published through uh, using OJS and um, of course in open access. But we are here today to talk about something different, um, which is a new initiative, a new, a new uh, project we've got. We had in mind already long ago, and uh, that uh, we thought th this would be the best uh, framework to present. So you are seeing right now a project that is being born in this moment, in this place, uh, for this occasion. Uh, well, we'll talk about this project, about the MOAC project, motivation of the project. Uh, we'll uh, try to explain you the aims, goals, and the uh, uh, objectives we've got in mind. And then we will ask you for some collaboration as well, because things that grow together are a little bit, well, are stronger, aren't they? So uh, let's go to the next. Um, as you all know, because you come from many different places, there are a bunch of languages right now, a bunch of languages in the world. There are more or less 7,111 live languages in the world. Of course, they all, not all of them publish um, um, research scholar uh, outputs. Oh, sorry, not all of them publish um, um, as many, as many uh, journals as uh, some of them. Uh, the most important ones probably are uh, Chinese, um, Spanish, English, those languages that are, talk, uh, that are used, spoken by uh, more, uh, a, a bigger number of, of speakers. But the truth is that those major languages uh, involve more or less 40% of the, of the population. There are 60% of the population that don't speak any major uh, language. So let's talk about bilingualism. Uh, there are data, uh, reliable data uh, about the bilingualism um, regarding the whole world, but we've got some data regarding Europe. Uh, as you can see, the average language is spoken by citizens in each of the EU uh, states members, um, member states. Um, depends on, 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 uh, on, 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 on the country, of course. Um, we can see some, there are some countries where citizens uh, on average, talk three to four uh, languages like Luxembourg, Croatia, Denmark, and the Netherlands. Uh, but there are also uh, countries where not, there aren't even two uh, languages in average spoken, like Spain, Portugal, United Kingdom. Uh, those countries that, whether they are not, um, they don't have a big tradition on learning foreign languages, or they don't need to learn foreign languages, like the, in the case uh, of the United Kingdom. Um, this is scenario is more or less, uh, it's probably um, also, um, we can approach this scenario, the, the multilingualism scenario from, from the perspective of um, uh, academic uh, publishing, of scholar publishing. This is, uh, the, the slide you've got um, here is not mine, it's from the European Science Foundation. And it shows you two different approaches to um, the initial list of anthropology journals or journals on anthropology in the uh, ERIH, uh, the ERI uh, uh, database. The first one, the first uh, figure, this chart, shows uh, these uh, publications. The publications included, taking into account where they, ha they are published. The second one shows what languages they are using. This is English, and this is multilingual, so this includes English as well. Um, and the, these slides, uh, are, are well, the whole presentation, this whole presentation, we've got the references here, um, talks about uh, publishing in the field of arts and humanities. And they pointed out that there is a specific publication culture in this field. Um, 
there, there are three characteristics that they think uh, make this field uh, special. The multiplicity of formats for research outputs, monographs, edited volumes, journals, conference proceedings, web-based content, etc. Uh, specific hierarchy of importance, monographs are, are of primary importance, peer-reviewed journals, articles are less important. In fact, they represent less than one-third of the outputs. And the third characteristic, which is also very important for us, uh, is that the significant, in terms of numbers and importance, uh, part of research outputs in national languages. So there is a huge production in languages which are not the top, which is mainly in this field, English, okay? Um, they, um, there are a lot of outputs published in other languages different than English. So, and this is, for instance, our case. Uh, this is the, the, the homepage of our journal. We work on the field of translation technologies. We work, uh, one of the topics we, we, um, uh, we work with is machine translation, translation technologies, databases, terminology, uh, things like that. We publish, as you will be able to see here, not very clearly, in Catalan, English, and Spanish, or Spanish. Um, I mean, uh, papers are published in just one language, whether Catalan or English or Spanish, and metadata uh, is published in, in all of the languages uh, included, uh, Catalan, English, Spanish, and we try to publish it in Chinese as well, which is uh, a kind of uh, new thing we are claim, trying to, to include. Um, um, there have been many studies done on, on multilingualism and uh, academic uh, journals. Um, one of them, you have the reference here, uh, found four different characteristics that had to be taken into consideration, uh, like uh, share the, every time the share of English publications increases over the time, native language publications are read and cited less than English languages. I think that meets some of the research uh, than some of the outputs presented by Sarah. Uh, open access impact on views and citation is higher for native languages. Uh, and journal ranking correlates with the share of English publications, even though we talk about multi-language uh, journals. Um, if we move on, we will see that um, depending uh, um, the language, the main language of publication of journals doesn't really match the place, the language, the main language of the place that were, where they were published. But still, even though these figures, these figures are not very uh, promising for the national languages, there is a lot of work done in these languages. And this uh, is an asset that should be, uh, from which we should take uh, benefits. So you are still wondering, what, what, what is this project about? What, are, what am I proposing, uh, proposing um, you right now? Well, let's, this is data. This data is in digital form. And data in digital form right now is very, very valuable. For what? For machine translation. Uh, machine translation needs linguistic data to translate. Uh, machine translation right now uh, has um, a strong hardware uh, component, which um, it's, it's uh, whether in, in universities or in, in, in private institutions mainly. Um, a strong uh, development of technological uh, assets in terms of software, uh, uh, in artificial intelligence, etc. But there is a third component which is absolutely necessary for machine translation, which is linguistic data. And we've got it. We just have to pull it, uh, put it all together. Um, language is a handicap and as well as an opportunity when in terms of digi in, the, in the digital uh, world. The, uh, what you've got here is the uh, report uh, on, on language technologies for a multilingual Europe uh, provided uh, that published the, the European uh, Commission um, two years ago. Uh, and what includes more or less what it talks about is uh, how to turn the handicap into an opportunity and to create a, a single digital market in Europe which should be a kind of um, one of the major markets in, in, in the world, a leading market, uh, digital market in the world in terms of uh, languages. Um, 
if we move a little bit uh, on, we will see that the European Union, and the, um, particularly the European Commission, uh, spends a lot of money in research in the field of translation technology. So all what you have here are projects funded with European, uh, through European actions, whichever it might be. They are all on translation, on language technologies, whatever. Uh, all the outputs of these projects are made public and available to everybody. Most of the results are available on GitHub um, uh, or other, other public uh, platforms. So the opportunities, they, uh, they create an output and these outputs are opportunities for companies, associations, whatever collectives, any, any kind of, 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 of uh, uh, collectives that may want to take uh, the best from this uh, technology. Um, but if we approach the, this sector, the machine translation sector, from this point of view, we will see that uh, taking into consideration the three main regions in the world which work in this field, um, Europe is the leader in terms of research and innovation, but it's not, they, we are not the leaders in terms of industry and market. The trans machine translation market is leaded by, by, by the North America, the United States mainly, but uh, by North America. Why? Because of data, uh, again. Data, uh, linguistic data um, are the heart, as to say, the essence of machine translation. And without data, even though we've got the best technology, even though we've got whatever we may need, we are not able to translate. We need this linguistic data to translate. Uh, if we think uh, of machine translation um, right now, most of you will probably have thought about these um, companies. All of them are private. All of them are proprietary. They might be for free. You may access the information for free. Okay, we've got Google Translate, you know it probably, uh, you surely know it, Microsoft as well. Amazon is one of the biggest in machine translation because they need to translate their own data. They need to uh, provide uh, their catalog, uh, its catalog in all the languages in which users access uh, Amazon. Facebook as well. Uh, Deeple, you, probably it's not as well known as the other ones. This is a particular company that um, works in the field of translation. This is probably the only one, together with Yandex, maybe, uh, that work, that devote their activity. Their business model is translation and not something different. And Baidu, which is uh, one of the best known in Asia, in, in, in China. These are the most, uh, the biggest companies working in machine translation right now. And most of them belong to, whether to the uh, North America, uh, region or to Asia region. There is no big European actor, stakeholder here right now. Um, th this is a, just an example of Facebook expanding automatic machine translation to more languages. This is a uh, uh, publication of 2000, uh, September 2018. They need to expand to more languages to get attraction of customers. I mean, it's just a, a question of business. Okay, language is the way we get new, they get new customers, that's, that's all. So, um, having this all in mind, let's, let's, why do I say that machine translation needs data? Okay, this is the business ecology of Alibaba translation. Alibaba is like Amazon, but, but in Asia. Uh, they publish um, all, well, um, Google and Microsoft usually don't publish this kind of, um, infographics, um, so I took the one from, from Alibaba, but their scheme, their, their, their flow, their workflow would be more or less the same. Everything starts with data. This is the very beginning. We've got technology, all right? This is our machine translation system. We've got software, we've got human translation platform, somebody translating and sharing with us their translation, but we've got the internet. Let me just read a paragraph from the website of Alibaba. First, Alibaba translation crawls data from the internet. This is the primary source of general data. Besides, Alibaba translation purchases data from or exchanges data with some academic institutions or translations, uh, translation agencies. Alibaba translation also collects data from the crowdsourcing platform. Alibaba translation has invested a lot of money um, and time in data collection, in data collection, sorry. As a result, Alibaba has obtained a vast volume of data in the e-commerce field and vast built 
and has built an enormous data reserve in the MT circle. At present, Alibaba Translation has maintained corpora of over 10 to 20 languages. Data is a valuable asset, a very valuable asset. Um, and it's a very valuable asset whether we talk about uh, statistical machine translation or we talk about neural machine translation. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's not on the technology we use. It's the, like, like the primary material, the, 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 the first asset uh, we need. So, uh, data, uh, as well as, uh, you probably know platforms like GitHub or these kind of platforms where we share uh, software, yeah? This is a platform to share linguistic data. All what we've got, we find here are corpora, uh, whether produced or collected or implemented by public fundings or public institutions. There is a huge amount of data here for machine translation, and it's already prepared, uh, formatted, to be used by uh, mm, machine translation systems. All this data is used by uh, any machine translation system in Europe, because it's public, in Asia, in, in, in United States, in North America, but they also crawl data from the internet that in Europe would be impossible to use because it's proprietary and we've got a, a strong regulation against the use, uh, the, the unallowed use of, um, of private data. This is, these regulations don't apply people, uh, companies in China or in other, in other places. So data is valuable and the way we get it in different places is different, okay? So what do we want to, pro to, to ask you? What do, what do we need you for and what uh, we would like to start right now? One of, uh, we've got, uh, as a research group, we've been working in machine translation. We've created a, a translation platform, not to translate, but to create our own machine translation engines. So uh, what we've got here, Metradomatica, is a platform to create our own mach uh, machine uh, translation engines statistical machine translation engines uh, with our own data, with data whether we, we pick it up from, from, from corpus corpus or data that we already have, okay? Um, the aim of this platform is to learn how these systems work and to test if our data is good enough to uh, train a, a, an engine, a machine to an empty engine, all right? So once we've got already the hardware and the software, well, what we don't have is data, okay? So, um, we want to create different corpora with academic content for any of the languages used to publish this kind of content. We want to pick it up with your allowance and your permission and to create corpora that, may, that uh, we will put, um, we will make available to the rest of the community. This corpora will have two different uh, functions to different aims. Uh, first of all, make visible the, uh, the national languages which are not English and uh, give the opportunity to extract terminology and to learn about these languages as well and to make them um, a valid vehicle for knowledge as well as English is. And in the second, uh, in, uh, in, as a second uh, aim, uh, we would like to collect as much data as possible to create machine translation engines that might be useful for those languages, whether they are only academic or for the whole standard of that language. But there are languages which are, which are not attractive at all to those companies we had in mind, so they are under-resourced. Under -resourced. And what we are trying to aim at is to put together all the resources that already exist and give these languages as an, uh, another opportunity to, to, to get resources, um, linguistic resources, to, to, to be as uh, useful as our languages. So what we've got in mind with the MOAC um, project is to, first of all, collect monolingual and bilingual academic content from open source publications. We are interested in metadata because we know that most of the journals which publish in more than one language will publish all the metadata bilingually. Um, and academic papers, even though they might be only on one language, they are also interesting. 
Uh, then we will share this, this, uh, this information, this data, this content through our uh, university repository and also through Opus Corpus, Open Corp uh, uh, Opus Corpus, sorry, because it's like a hub for this kind of data and, and, and we think that all these, the same kind of data should remain together. And then we will test uh, the performance of um, uh, empty uh, engines uh, trained with, this kind, with our own data and once they are good enough, eventually we will make them available and of course you will get information, you will, get, uh, you will hear about these engines once they are available. So um, that's what we've got in mind and that's what we are starting right now. First of all, if we can count of you, we would like to collect your details just, just uh, to know who we should contact to start collecting data, gathering data together. Uh, and then once a year, see what you have published uh, uh, for new and download it in order to make the content processable by, by machine translation engines uh, as linguistic corpora and uh, make the corpora available to linguistic and, 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 and the research uh, um, um, academy, uh, to, the, to the community. Okay? So that's more or less what the MOAC project is about. Please, if you follow this link, you will be able to just let us know that you're interested in this initiative and you, that you would like to uh, take part of the initiative. Somebody of our team will contact you and see how we can, uh, whether, um, well, what kind of processes of flow, of, of download flow, of share uh, content flow we can set um, to every time you publish something new or once a year uh, pick up your information and even if you already have a huge heritage of a huge uh, amount, a hive of information uh, to download it um, and, and start with a strong um, starting point. Uh, so if and the last slide, Ramon, if you can go to the next one. Thank you. That was all. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>